Hello and welcome to this latest update on the Yasuo Model Railway and not so much an update because not a great deal has been going on other than I've added a few bits to the platform and work continues on Trinity Square but I thought I would just run you through this time uh, an idea of kind of how I go about things. You'll remember from an earlier video the question how do you eat an elephant and the answer of course was one bite at a time. So when you're taking on a project like Trinity Square, how do I go about it? Well, the major project at Trinity Square revolves around the station building, which is going to be there, the station concourse, the parcels building, the offices, and then what happens between here and right down the other end all the way up there. Now originally up here I had a wooden overpiece, you'll remember that from previous videos, but I wanted to have this idea of a girder bridge and some walling and then the slope which basically took the road from that level there which is about four inches above the baseboard on a slope following this line all the way down to come down to be level with the platform there and that's a distance of about 12 14 feet so it's quite a gentle slope now you can see as i've mocked up here i've got some of the uh, the ideas in in train and let me talk you through those a quick diversion back to Yarslow South, and here's the signal box looking a little uh, worse for wear. And this corner here with the overbridge and then the road down to the station. Uh, I just want to make the point here that none of this was actually planned. I had an idea that I wanted a road overbridge, and originally it was going to go over the tracks and then turn right and go that way or I turn left and go that way, I wasn't quite sure. And I did have half a mind that maybe this could be a road down here, maybe not. And this is really my problem with scenery. I, whilst I find it very easy to lay out track and wire it up, and I can see how this is gonna look in my head when I had all this in mind, when it comes to scenery, I don't have that eye. I don't have that ability to see the scenery. And so it kind of grows organically. This bridge, which you've seen before and was built and now set into the countryside, um, that was always going to be there. But the idea of the wall and the platform here, um, that kind of grew organically. Certainly that wall at the back, I had an idea that I wanted to put in. This bit here, kind of grew organically. I'm not convinced about that, but I, I, maybe with a few bushes and trees it'll disappear. And the idea of a kind of low bank at the back. But it, this kind of evolved as it went along. This section here, probably have some trees and things. There's going to be a building. I still can't decide what to put in that corner. Um, I'll come up with something at some point. And then there's kind of a bit of waste ground here between the road and the um, back of the wall and I, I'm playing around at the moment as you can see with a bit of spear fencing and I quite like the idea that down this edge there might be some spear fencing somehow like that perhaps not with a name on it just to separate the scenery from the road and then you can't see behind the station building so what goes on around there uh, we don't find out about Let's take that back to Trinity Square and how this has grown. So the station building is going to go there with a canopy over the concourse and I'm imagining that the concourse canopy may come to in line here with the edge of the goods shed. It may just come to the edge of the platform here. I haven't quite decided yet. I'll, I'll make that decision when the time comes. These offices will probably won't stick out, they might sit back and there'll be more offices there and then there'll be possibly housing or offices here 
haven't quite decided, but something. But I have made this wall. This is a classic plastic card and um, card wall, one mil card, two sections at the bottom. So I've got a bit of a step. You can see it's, it steps out there. I've made some coping stones on the top there. I need to put some more coping stones on the top here. This is brick and this is just a different style, a kind of a stone face. If I can get that in focus to show you, you'll see the two, there we go. You'll see the two styles of brick, okay? And that gives me that kind of basis behind the platform and then everything else kind of tucks in behind. So what I'm going for here is the idea that the station ends at the wall and then there is life beyond the station. These are as old as me, I think, These some of these prints. And um, this is going to go here and give that impression when you're sitting looking at the station that there is a bit of life in the city. And of course, Trinity Square implies that there might be a, a church or a cathedral kicking about somewhere. And of course, there it is. The um, Trinity Square itself is very much an administrative part of the city. It's not a pretty part of the city. That's what um, Beckbridge Central Station serves. So here, as you can see, with this printout, uh, which shows house backs and shops and fa a factory and one or two other bits and pieces and the gas works, that um, this is not the nicest part of town, and that's fine. Now these paper um, buildings start out flat. You can see they're very flat, no, no um, texture in them at all. And whilst they're quite nice and very usable, they're very flat. So what I have done in the past is to cut them up into different bits. And I hope this, this comes out on camera. Um, you can see actually that the name of this has, has, has become unstuck. But what I've done is to cut off, and this is if I stand this one up, there we go. What I've done here is to cut off the roof. I've cut off the, the name of the shop and I've cut out the doorways. And then I mount the individual bits on different layers of cards. So if you look at this side on, hopefully you can see this, there is a lip for the roof and there is a lip here for the door. And so when you look at it from an angle, there is some texture. I'm hoping the camera picks that up. But there is some texture in the building rather than this, which of course is very flat. So what I'm going to do with this piece of um, work here is to do the same thing. I shall probably cut off the house fronts or shop fronts here and these house backs and then mount them a layer forward. The extensions at the back of the houses I shall cut off and put them a further uh, forward and then maybe the church uh, this chimney and maybe some of these other buildings in the background I will cut those off and then mount everything else one card forward so we'll have one two three four layers of card and I use quite heavy card to give this a bit of depth and of course I'll cut the sky off because I want to match that when I paint the backboard blue the honest truth, of course, is that when you're working on the station, and you'll see now I've got my signals in place. These are two aspect, I think these are Ecom signals. I've got four of them. He says, elbowing a wagon over. I've got four of them set up for platforms four, three, two, and one when you're working on the station the background just ceases to have a direct relevance and actually it just fills in the blank so I, I don't have to have anything too wonderful here but you'll get the idea that I'm trying to create a scene so moving on beyond my wall not very perceptible here but from this point here this wall starts to rise and this is the start of this slope goes up to the overbridge. This factory was on the old Yarslow layout. I've had this years 
and again I might cut the windows out and set them back on card to give that a bit of texture and I might put some proper drain pipes on rather than the paper ones and give that some feeling. There are some strengthening bolts on here that you can see these plates and I could put those on as well. Then I've got two pieces of plastic card. This is going to be some kind of office factory type building that's going to be based around two pieces of A4 brick sheet. Haven't quite worked out yet. I'll go through my magazines and find out what I'm going to use. And then I've got these. These were an internet purchase. There's four of these house backs. Very high quality prints. Very nice. Um, they are a bit of a mistake because they are modern houses and you'll see that they've got modern windows which is a bit of a shame but it may be that what I'll do is I'll leave them in and not worry about that or I will build house backs to copy these and I might um, just use them for the for dimensions but I, I like these and what's actually going to happen here is that there will be this black line which you can just about see this is the height of the road so the wall in fact will be here so these houses are too low in fact but in fact you won't see the doors and the lower half anyway because the wall will hide them but you get the idea that the road is beginning to rise because the houses are beginning to rise and that gets me up to here and then I think I'm going to have to just go for some walls so I will put just walling I think on here and then some vague background buildings when I got up to this end I have been building some wills kits so I've got junk out of the way move the water tower I had these left over. These are Will's viaduct kits. Um, and I've just made them up. Uh, in fact, I just had four sheets. I'm not quite sure where they came from, but I cut the, um, the arches out. I've put arch brick over the top. And they are going to be the basis for the first section there. This bit... This is an occupied arch kit. When you buy this from Wills, you get four sections. And the idea is that you either make it as one long section or you make it as a double-sided two-wide bridge. Well, I've made it up as four. And it just so happens that with a bit of spare brickwork, I've made up a bit of the end here and a bit at the far end, and you end up with this. And this one here is going to be a storage for the loco shed as is that one there, that pair of arches there behind the coal stave. So I'm now, it's now beginning to come together. You can see how the, the uh, loco yard is beginning to come together. This is the advanced starter for Yardslow. So that's station limits there. And I've got my ground signals in. all over the place. The engine shed looking spangly. And what I've done is to expand using these on-on switches. These are for the signals, obviously red-green. So I've got the starter for platform one, platform two, platform three, platform four, then arrival one, arrival two, arrival three, arrival four, arrival centre siding so you can actually arrive at the station and drive up that centre siding if you want to and the very last one is the lever which will work the advanced starter over there this as you can see by the various bits of card is going to be a building it's going to be an extension of that roof line there is going to come down here this will be covered with a building and this will be covered with something with a flat roof and I shall put a front on it, on both of them, so that they just look like some kind of line side building and it will end up looking a bit like it does at Yarslow over here. 
Now you'll have noticed as the camera has been flitting around that we also have this. Now this is far from finished but this is one of my uh, made up of bits type pieces of work. You can see the sides here, these, these um, pillars actually come from the wheels kit as does the bit of walling. The girder in the middle is simply a piece of 50 thou with some plastruct on here, two L sections, plastruct, to make up the uprights, a flat um, top, and then there's a flat plate underneath, and then behind that is a piece of plastruct girder that's had on the back of it a plain piece of card added just for filling in. A bit of paint and hey presto, there we are, a bit of careful measuring, and you'll see under here the sides of the bridge have been carefully notched to accept it and it lives there. I've made another one up. This is exactly the same construction. The other side hasn't been painted on the back for obvious reasons but you'll see it's just black plastic card and that's going to go in there to give the impression of course that the railway runs right under there. This thing, this is very much straight out of the bits box. Again, we've got a wheels pillar at the end. The rest is just bits of plastic card from the wheels range that I had kicking around in my box with the coping on the top. And you end up with something like that. Now, I won't pull it all out because it's a bit of a faff, but you can see that these wheels brick arches have been stuck to one millimeter card and there's some supports in there to help hold the thing upright and that card is the height of the road and I'm using a bit of ply for the road so this very neatly fits in like this it'll obviously be glued to hold it in place then the girder goes on the side bit goes on and you end up with a complete scene. Now I'd like to tell you that that was all uh, turns out exactly as I planned it, and designed it, but the truth is that having put the four wheels arches in place, the rest was just basically careful measuring and made up on the hoof, but you know what? It's all right, I quite like that. You'll see brick paper on the top here that I'm going to use to line the two sides. I haven't made that inside yet, but that, that side there will be lined with brick paper because really you, you don't look under there, so the texture is not important. For me, the texture of the wheel's brick is important and that will carry on around the corner. And being a busy part of town with the road coming across here, I'm going to put a few shops these are my old card shops. I probably won't use these, but there's a number of very nice MDF cut shop fronts on the, the uh, eBay and on the internet. And I think I might have a row of older shops on there with uh, something butting up to the girder here. And here's another example where the thought processes really need to get themselves working because originally on the plan I saw the branch line as sitting on quite a steep embankment and I thought this was going to be a lot steeper than it actually was. It's turned out to actually look really nice with that kind of flat ground and the branch line rising in the background and for a moment I did have an idea that there would be an overbridge here to hide the main lines perhaps coming across at an angle and then having a level crossing there and then something here to disguise the fact that the tracks disappeared but when I started to mock it up it all looked a bit bonkers so that hasn't happened and I'm just going to use some trees to, to disguise the fact that there's a hole in the sky. What works to uh, my advantage here is the fact that when you're in the normal operating position 
you are looking very much side on at this so you don't see the hole in the sky so it's not actually going to take much to to put a tree here and to lose that edge I mean closest I get to uh, scenic planning is having a broad idea of some of the things I want and I was at Glasgow exhibition recently and I raided a number of trade stands to acquire things like these line side cabinets bearing in mind that Trinity Square has gone colour light signals these are going to be necessary I don't think I've quite got the green colour right yet but I'm getting close there is one of these boxes at the end of the road in very old 60s paint so I shall go up and have a look at that I also managed to well I had some spare time to paint my buffer stops and I've added lights particularly to these old Hornby ones these really are pretty ropey as buffer stops, but they work having been cut down um, to go on to the end of the Trinity Square lines. And I found a company who were producing double ground signals. Sweet things they are. Nice little kit to make. So I've made those. I've made up five of those. And they are going to sit around the layout in their appropriate places. Now this is another of my recent acquisitions. This is um, the Ratio um, Pratt Trust Gantry kit that I wanted for the entry to Trinity Square and I've started to make it and you will notice some modifications. There are no signal posts uh, but there is uh, a range of plast struct tubing and this is why I'm going to fit some of the two aspect signals to the posts and what's going to happen is that the gantry will be built and it will sit over the entry to the tracks about here somewhere and then there will be platform four, platform three, the centre siding platform two and platform one so that on the entrance you'll have colour lights to show which track the arriving train is going into and I'm going to finish this section by saying that when you're working on things and making things up on the hoof progress is quite slow and sometimes it's easy to get a bit disillusioned and disheartened and you end up kind of sitting at your desk here um, and you paint a few passengers or you, you, you paint some accessories and that's what I've been doing just to, to sort of get the brain re-energised and as a total sidetrack the net result of that has been that I bought myself a paint station. Uh, this is an MDF uh, laser cut job. It holds the new Humbrol bottles the old Humbrol tub, tubs, some of my washes. Uh, just as a total aside, when I first bought these Humbrol bottles, I wasn't over impressed. I much prefer the old tubs, but do you know what? Having got used to them and starting to use them, I like them a lot. So that's uh, been installed in the corner of the desk, and we've got a bit more access now to paintwork, and I've got various tools and things still dotted around here for use. So sometimes some of the progress that you make is nothing to do with the layout but it just makes life more easy and more comfortable. Something else which clearly breaks up the uh, the boredom if you can use that word sometimes of slaving away and that's to run a few trains. So I'm going to leave you with some running trains. Stay safe. I'll see you soon.